Okay, start the webinar in three, two, one. Let me pull. It up. says that it's in practice session. Exactly. I have. Oh, to... okay. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Uh, okay. You got this. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our slightly delayed Tech Tuesday. Uh, we apologize for the late start. I had another webinar just before this, and it ran just a couple of minutes over, so I do apologize. Um, but welcome. At any rate, uh, we're talking unboxing the latest in QuickBooks Online, and we're so happy you're able to join us um, for this presentation from Out of the Box in partnership with Intuit. Today's presenter is Leah Hartman, Principal Professional Services Consultant at Intuit. Leah specializes in QuickBooks Online, QuickBooks Online Accountant, and QuickBooks Online Payroll. Uh, she's spoken at a number of our webinars in the past, and she's always been a favorite. Her expertise is unrivaled, so I do encourage you to um, chat out any questions you might have in real time in the Q&A, and we will try to address those as they arise. As for me, my name is Jeanette schwartz rattan I am Director of Marketing here at Out of the Box, and I will be your moderator for the day. I've just, just got just a few housekeeping items before we um, I hand it over to Leah and we start digging in. This session is being recorded. Uh, it will be shared with you later this afternoon via email along with the slide deck, so um, you don't have to give yourself carpal tunnel taking notes. Um, you can listen and review anything um, via the recording if necessary. Um, this should be a pretty short presentation because there haven't been a ton of updates um, this quarter to online. Uh, so we will have time at the end for questions as well. A little bit about Out of the Box, if you haven't joined us before, or maybe it's been a while. Uh, here at Out of the Box, our mission is to empower entrepreneurs with the QuickBooks-based financial tools, services, and insights they need to thrive. Out of the Box is the premier choice for QuickBooks accounting services, tools, and insights, boasting over 30 years of experience and a track record of exceeding the expectations of more than 50,000 satisfied clients. Our comprehensive accounting solutions save you time and money while providing you the financial accuracy, security, and insights necessary to grow your business. As an elite QuickBooks solution provider, we are able to offer you exclusive discounts and pricing, so please be sure to connect with us before purchasing your QuickBooks solutions. Whoops, went a little bit too far. Um, with that, I believe I've covered all of our housekeeping items, so I am going to stop sharing and hand it off to Leah. Leah. Thank you so much. Happy to be here. Thanks again for uh, having me and, and being here for the quarter. Um, I'm going to start sharing my screen. So um, as Jeanette said, we do have a short list of updates that I wanted to share with you guys today. So please feel free to ask any questions. We'll get to those uh, that are not related to the content um, at the end. And uh, we'll go from there. Otherwise, give you time back. So I started with chunking this out based on product feature, and I'm going to be very clear and specific on who gets to have it from a version perspective and who doesn't. So if there's any confusions on that, just let me know and we'll go through there. Uh, but the first updates that we're going to talk about uh, are two big ones. Um, the biggest one being the Chase Bank Statement Import, um, and so uh, as well as Commerce. So most of this, if not all, will be in product. A couple of those, uh, these features I won't be able to necessarily show you guys, but we can speak to it. And I have lots of resources. Most of these slides do have uh, articles that link too. So if you wanted to learn more research um, and, and do all that good stuff, you'll be able to do it directly from the, the resources that I've given uh, out of the box. Um, so just a bit of background. Uh, if you've been around for a hot minute, uh, you'll, you may or may not be familiar with commerce. Commerce is kind of a, an approach for Intuit to connect to e-commerce type selling stores. So your Ebays and your Amazons and your Shopify's and being able to manage your products and services as well as bringing in the sales orders that those that those services provide and being able to track all of that in your accounting software. Well, the good news is we've updated some of that. And so the biggest thing that I wanted to share with you guys is, is uh, you can now track your inventory if you were to connect. So let's say you have Amazon, eBay, or Shopify, and you want to connect to QuickBooks Online. It is free. It is not an additional charge to connect to QBO. And depending on the version of QBO that you have will depend on how many channels you can actually connect. So for example, 
simple start, if you're in simple start, it would only be one. And I believe essentials is two. Plus and advanced are either three and then unlimited or they're both three. I can't remember on the on the high ones, but I know it's more than that. So um, we only have the three currently, uh, Amazon, eBay, and Shopify from a commerce perspective, but we will definitely grow as we continue to improve this product. So let's say you connect the channel to your QuickBooks Online. You'll have the opportunity now to, in the plus and advanced product only, uh, you'll be able to uh, get better visibility of your products and variants, including stock levels and cost details. So you'll be able to get notifications when you're getting low on inventory. You'll be able to create purchase orders to restock directly through our product, not necessarily having to do that through the channel itself, Amazon, eBay, or Shopify. You can track new orders from multiple sales channels as well as getting those insights from the accounting perspective. Uh, and if you click on the learn more button, I'm just gonna show you really quickly. If you click on the learn more button, you will get uh, sent to this article that kind of walks you through how to track and manage the inventory for commerce in QuickBooks Online. And so it'll show you if you choose not to track your inventory with your sales channel or understanding how your books are going to get affected. So I feel like this is a very thorough and thought out uh, article. If you're wanting to just understand commerce in general, there are some other resources like comparing them. Um, this does give me the ability to see here from a subscription level it's included in all versions and it is available for all versions it just depends on how many channels you can connect from the version perspective shows you what it can and can't do and then it also shows you some tracking um not tracking but some um like how to import how to set up your initial cost how to track your cost of goods so all kinds of cool stuff so lots of really great things about that not a whole lot of updates, but I think that that's a really important one, especially if you're interested, if you're in the business of doing e-commerce, if you have those sales channels, might be something to look into uh, if you haven't done so already. From a product perspective, you're going to access the sales channels through your transactions tab in the left-hand navigation bar. So those are going to normally live under the app transaction. Uh, so very similar to a bank feed, it would look very similar, uh, but you'll be able to access that and start the connection through there. Again, we do have walkthroughs on how to do that if you're interested. And if you can't find it, let me know and we'll we'll make sure we get that to you. The other update that I wanted to share with you guys really quickly was the Chase Bank Statement Import. So as we know, Statement Imports have was announced Gosh, a long time ago. It took us a long time to get that set up. And we finally, finally, finally worked with Chase. We got to an agreement and now statements are available inside the product. So what does that look like? I actually have personal, I use Chase personally. And so I've had my bank account connected to my QuickBooks Online product for a long time. And so I can show you guys what it looks like. Yay! Uh, if you click on the gear icon and you go to the reconcile screen and you have a bank that is supported for statement import, you will see this fancy little button that says show bank statement. Um, and you'll see here my Chase checking account. I can click on view statements and I'll be able to get access to the list of statements that are available. Now, a couple things. You can't dictate how far back the statements go. I believe it's about a year. Uh, maybe a little less. You can see that I have my statements as, as far as, as early as last month back into uh, October of last year. So just keep in mind that's not something that you can necessarily dictate as far as how back, how far back it goes, but it's a great start. Um, and you'll also get to see here if you reconciled that month or that statement period, you'll get to differentiate between the unreconciled versus reconciled. So there's no password that you need to put in. You just simply click on it and you'll get your little PDF pop-up. Oh, where did I put it? <laughs> Whoops. You'll get your little PDF pop-up here. You'll be able to start your reconcile, put in your ending balance, put in your ending date, close it out, call it a day. I don't have to sign into my Chase account anymore, which when I'm demoing reconciling, I always have to do, you know, on my other screen. And so it makes it just really easy. Um, from a personnel perspective, if you have, if you're not the owner of the bank and you're trying to reconcile the account, it just makes it so much easier because you're not having to ask for that documentation. And uh, yeah, super cool. This was one of the major banks that was kind of like the last to give us this information. So 
really, really exciting um, from Chase's perspective. So I believe if you have Chase and you are linked to QuickBooks, you should be able to view your statements. I was just in an example or a scenario where I just connected my Chase bank account to a, a different QuickBooks and it asked me to enroll in statement fetching. So there might be a bit of a delay depending on where you're at or where you are, like if you're connected or not. And so just keep that in mind. It might take a, a couple of days for it to show up if you're just now making that connection. Let me jump back in here to my slides. So those are pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Uh, the next thing I wanna talk a little bit about is workflow, um, QuickBooks Online Advanced specific updates. Oops. So QuickBooks Online Advanced is our highest version or subscription level in QuickBooks Online. Uh, it has a lot of functionality and features that the other versions don't have, but it does include everything the other versions have. So think of it as like unlocking additional features. And so we've made quite a few uh, updates and leaps and bounds in, in, in enhancements in this product. And I want to share those with you guys. So if you're currently in the product now, these should be features that you can all use. And so one of the biggest things, the biggest uh, pain points or, you know, pieces of feedback that we get all the time is, is we created this workflow process. And if you're not familiar with workflows, it's basically where you have an opportunity to, to, to tell QuickBooks, hey, I have a, an action I want you to do. I want, I want to create conditions based on that action, and then it gets executed based on the time frame, uh, whatever reoccurring you know time frame that you create, whether it's one time, monthly, quarterly, however long. And one of the things that we started working on was bill approval and invoice approval. Now, Intuit's language considers those two very different things. So just to make sure we're on the same page, when I say bill approval, I'm talking about accounts payable, uh, which is 99% of the time what people call invoices. So uh, accounts payable is um, a bill approval process. And so we've now included multi-layered bill approvals. So let's say for example, I wanna request, so let's say for example, I wanna create a bill approval process directly in QuickBooks Online, where I can say if, person number one isn't available or person number two is there, then I have an opportunity to have up to, you know, X amount of people to be sent the email to say, hey, I need this to be approved. And what I really like is, as you can see in the screenshot here, where I kind of have this tree, it kind of walks you through the scenarios. Like if you start here, a bill is created or edited. When this happens, right, we talk about the actual, the um, the creation of the item. In this case, it's a bill. You can create conditions based on that. So let's say if the bill is between a certain amount or it's a specific date or if it's a specific customer, you can customize that. We made this one pretty simple. We said if it's between zero and a thousand, if the answer is yes, then it requires a, an approval here on the left-hand side. And then this is where you can create multiple uh, not create multiple, but you'll get to add multiple conditions. Not just one person gets sent the approval, you can actually send it to quite a few. And so you'll see, you'll be able to create it. If you want a task to get created within QuickBooks Online Advance, you can check the box there. Or if you want to just have them emailed to the team, they'll have to go into QuickBooks Online Advance, approve it, and then move on. And then of course, if it's a no, then it'll walk you through if the amount uh, is between 1,000 and 5,000. And then if it's a yes, then it's a different re re request approval process. And if it's not, if it's more, right, it, you get to go as deep as you need to when it comes to this multi-condition approval process. Whereas before it was kind of black and white. If it's uh, a bill, um, if it's a, like a specific condition that you've created, then this is the outcome, that's it. So now you have more than one outcome. And to tie a bow around that, I just want to show you guys here really quickly what I'm talking about and where you can find it. So if you use QuickBooks Online Advanced currently today, you can find it. Um, actually, give me one second. Let me switch to a different product. Bear with me just really quick because that QuickBooks Online subscription did not have the right level of access. So let me load my advanced version, which I should have done earlier. There we go. 
So still looks the same, but on the left-hand navigation bar, you'll see workflows. Workflows lives here. You have templates, my workflows and run history, which shows you the audit of if the workflows executed properly and if they didn't, it'll tell you what happened. So when I click on workflows and I have a ton of pre-created templates, again, if you've been around for a hot minute and you've seen the beginnings of advanced, this list was very small. And so we've continued to expand it, make it better. Uh, and so the bill approval process is one of the big ones that people really, really like and like to talk about. So I'm just going to type in bill because I'm not going to sit there and search for it. But bill multi-condition approval, when you go to click on it, it'll walk you through that tree that you just saw. Uh, so really great. These are all clickable items. I can build these out. So when a bill is created or edited, you get to choose what happens. And then you get to choose yes it needs to be approved or no. And then you can do a click down further of what's the next step. If it's more than a thousand, then who does it need to go to? And so on and so forth. So you get to create those, save it, turn on. Uh, I think it's really cool. I'm a visual person. So to me, that makes a lot of sense. And it's super helpful uh, for me to kind of walk through that from a visual perspective. Once you've created your workflow, you'll be able to access your workflow uh, through the My Workflows tab. Uh, and cool thing, you don't have to delete one if you don't want to use it anymore. You can just turn it off. It makes it really nice because then you could go back and turn it on again if you would like to go back instead of recreating. So that makes it a little bit nicer. Uh, you can also create custom workflows. Uh, I feel like the templates kind of do that for you because there's so many and you can kind of modify as you go, but there is an opportunity to create your own custom ones as well. It just kind of walks you through like, what would you like to create? And given on the, given the circumstances and what we can do within the workflow space, you'll be able to select what you need and, and basically go from there. So that's the updates with workflows, multi-conditions, uh, super cool. The next thing I wanted to talk about, actually, you know what? Let me just separate this out so I don't have to keep switching it to uh, slideshow mode. That would probably be nice. That would probably be nice. OK, so the next thing I wanted to share with you guys is custom roles. So these now include three additional options. So let's just talk about custom roles here really quick since we have a little bit of time. So custom roles is. Uh, Basically what I would consider like granular access for employees of the business to access QuickBooks Online. And you could be pretty specific on what you want them to see and not want them to see, what you want them to access versus not want to access. And so you can access that by going to the gear icon in the upper right-hand corner and then heading to the manage user screen. Um, if you're not in advanced, this is gonna look a lot different for you. Just a heads up, you if you're in Simple Start Essentials or Plus, your roles or your uh, your user permissions is pretty straightforward, black and white. There's not a lot of um, customizations, I should say, that are available. That's the benefit of being in the advanced product where you can kind of customize it a little bit more. Uh, individuals, hey, I only want you to look at this. I only want you to have access to that. And so just a heads up. <clears throat> advanced offers up to 25 billable users. So you can have uh, up to 25 employees uh, in and out of QuickBooks Online Advanced. But the roles feature is what I wanted to focus on here really quickly. Uh, you have preset roles that are already created within the product, primary admin, company admin, and then there's a few others, but you can create your own. And so you can see that there's been some roles that we've created. There's been some preset roles uh, already. And then adding a role versus editing, same process. It looks like the same, the same thing. And so this is the screen that was on the screenshot that we saw that I'll go back to in just a minute so I can share with you the updates. Uh, but th this is where you'll be able to, you know, go specifically through things, give your role a name, say, hey, I want them to only have access to certain things within the sales product, within the uh, or the sales section of the product, expenses, et cetera. So let me jump back. So the, the, the three big major things that we've updated you can control access to more types of transactions, such as invoices, estimates, bills, expenses, POs, and checks. If you've been in advanced and you know it was, um, it's not perfect. We're, con you know, slowly modifying over time so that when we do roll out, there's no major hiccups or blips. 
uh, in the product. And so we now have the ability to kind of customize a little bit more. Um, you also have more control over what team members can do with transactions like view only, create, edit, and delete. So you'll see these boxes are starting to kind of unlock more and more as we go through. More specific access to task areas like bank feeds, reconciliation, your registers, your chart of accounts, uh, your journal entries, and online bill pay. So we are working on that. I believe if you're not seeing this in your file right now, if you're in advance, I don't think this is rolled out 100% just yet. And it's only, it's, it's again, a slow rollout. So if you don't see it yet, more to come. We're still working through that. Just be patient. Uh, we obviously know that um, this is exciting, especially those like, I've been asking for this for a long time. Um, so we are working through that. If you want to learn more about custom roles, I do have the article linked here for you as well. Quick question for you, Leah. Do you have kind of a timeline for that? Is it over the next few weeks, months? It's tough to say. And uh, I get that question a lot when we're working with rollouts and updates. And so the 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 best thing I can say is, is when we announced that something's coming and we started to roll it out, it's usually 50% or more of the customer base already has it. And it's uh, the extra 50%, right, that we're continuing gotcha. to roll out. Usually a month. Um, within a month, um, sometimes it takes a little bit longer if they run into a hiccup or a, a, a blip. Um, but there's no um, no reason to, you know, give you guys a call or reach out to us, however you guys want to work on that. Like, you guys are more than welcome to reach out and ask, like, hey, is this available for everyone yet or not? Um, and so we'll be able to let you know yes or no. Perfect. But I, I wish Intuit was a little bit better about announcements and, like, who has it, who doesn't, and when is it going to come out? Because sometimes things change and happen. So it's just, it's just one of those frustrating things. Uh, I'd love to be able to give you a date. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I, look for, if you don't have it, look for it over the next four weeks or so. Heck yeah, for uh, sure. Gotcha. Um, and if anything happens that we're not moving forward with it, we'll announce it. So there's always an expectation that if we've announced it, it's coming. It just might take a minute, but if it's not coming, we'll definitely let you know. Okie doke. Thank you for the question. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> That's always a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I always want to tell everyone, like, I promise it's coming and I want to give you dates, but it's never fun when it you're like, hey, April 1st is done and gone. Like, what the heck, Leah? <laughs> you left me. <laughs> <clears throat> um, and pardon me, I'm not sure. I think my allergies are acting up. So excuse me if I sound a little, a little rusty. Uh, the next thing I wanted to speak to was revenue recognition. So this is a newer feature that we've implemented in advanced, I want to say within the last year or two. And so we've made some updates to it. So uh, you can actually calculate uh, revenue recognition now on a schedule, um, but you can actually suit some different scenarios. So you can edit a schedule after saving an invoice and then project-based customers. So if you are project-based, you will benefit the most from this. Uh, you can do simplified editing and deleting. You can now add products or delete product line items on an invoice or a sales receipt or void any invoice on the sales receipt for any reason after the fact. And then you can now adjust pricing and date. You can now adjust the price of a revenue recognition item before the schedule begins to post. You can also revise the service date of a line item. So what am I talking about? If we go back to the product here really quick, and then let's say I need, first of all, I have to create the product or service to tie the revenue recognition first. So you're going to go to your products and services list. Uh, in this case, sales, products and services. And um, I don't know if I have any already. I should have some already created in this file, but I myself and a few other of the consultants use this to test stuff. So there is a possibility I don't. But... Creating a new one, editing an existing is very um, same process. So we'll just create a new one here real quick. You're going to choose the product or service item. I'm just going to click service, select service, excuse me. We're just going to call this out of the box test because, you know, if I, I can't create the same name twice. So I'm sure bookkeeping, sales, fees, they're all in there. Choose your category. Uh, in this case, we're just going to call this one. We're not going to choose a category. We're going to go into income, sales accounts, fine. What I want to focus on really here is, is the revenue recognition down here where it says new. I recognize revenue for this product monthly. 
I can click on monthly and it should show me. Nope, it doesn't. Takes me to account and settings. Okay, this is new. Um, fun fact, sometimes I don't even know when they do stuff and change things. So <laughs> hang on with me. So it looks like they have a setting now inside the account and settings where it says revenue recognition is on. Oh, you have to turn it on. Oh, you can change the frequency here. Duh, that makes sense. Oh, interesting. So it does look like you have an opportunity. So before it was monthly and that was it, no questions asked. Now it looks like you can select daily or monthly. And those are the only two options so far, but there are options, uh, daily or monthly, and then clicking save. So it does look like it takes you to the account and settings page for you to change it. And then you can hit done. Um, it does look like it is a frequency across the board. You got to pick one or the other. You can't have more than, uh, like, you can't have a, one product or service daily, one monthly. It has to be one or the other. But that sucks because it took me away from creating a new thingy. Um, let's try this again. Out of the box test. Income account, revenue recognition. We'll keep it at monthly, but just know what that does. And then you're going to choose your liability account. We've suggested deferred revenue. You can do a service duration, a uh, length of time you you provide this service. So you have an opportunity to set that. Um, so we could just say, let's say it's 12 months. Service interval would be months or years. And then save and close. Once you've done that, then the in order for the revenue recognition to actually start working is you have to start creating invoices with that product or service, and then you'll be able to rev you know recognize that revenue. So if we go to, in this case, um, forgive me, it's called a pledge, but it is an invoice. Someone was messing with the uh, language settings, probably because they were working with a nonprofit. <laughs> so um, invoice, pledge, uh, same thing. Uh, Fill out your client information, your customer information, just like you would normally, making sure that you provide or add your out-of-the-box test uh, product or service in order to get that revenue recognition. So let's just say we're going to put $500. Oops. My internet is being so mean to me today. Don't you hate when that happens? It's the worst. I just had to switch my extender to hardwired and it made it worse. I hate that. I'm actually like thinking I need to reboot my router. I've never, it's never been this slow for me before. Could be. Yeah. Um, okay. Give me, let's do this one. Out of the box test. Just trying to, just trying to um, share with you guys this, uh, this feature here. So I'm so sorry. Give, give me a second. Save. Oh, service date for the, duh. Why do I do this to myself? Okay, where's the service date? Am I missing it? Yeah, it's in my face. Let's say it's today. That's fine. Today. Make sure you put your service date in there, guys. Don't forget that. Uh, once you hit save, um, I have only been able to see the revenue recognition when I open up an invoice and it says, literally view revenue recognition and it'll pop it on the right hand side i think i think it might be in the report section we can test that if you really need to if we really need to see that but this does give you that breakdown you'll be able to switch between products and services up here at the top based on what you've created and what you've used in this particular scenario we have not created any other options or um, um revenue recognition products and services but you'll be able to see that from a yearly perspective. I kept it to monthly, so that's why you see that uh, from a monthly perspective. But um, other than that, recognize now, you'll be able to see here the remaining value in your liability account um, and the amounts that need to be recognized. And then you'll be able to go from there. So lots of different, like they've, they've definitely made some changes in here for the better, but it looks different than what it did before, so person it does yeah did we talk about the new invoice layout that's coming last time and i apologize if i'm asking that mm, i don't believe so so just as a heads up this is kind of a conversation that we've talked about for years uh and but the the update layout new prompted me to be like oh wait this might be something just as a heads up if you haven't seen this. Um, so this is not on the slides. This is not, but essentially what's happening is, is this screen that we're looking at right now is very, very old 
from a coding perspective. So we have not made any updates or changes on this screen for a very long time. And so it's time for refresh. It's time for it to look very similar to the other spots of QuickBooks Online. And I, I personally think that with this new update, it's going to uh, provide a lot more um, insight and it's gonna look, it looks good. Uh, the only issue that I have seen is, is there are some things that are not available functionalized uh, in the new update versus the old update. So if you see the selection to do the update, try it out. You can always revert back. We will eventually be closing the old update out forever. Um, I don't know exactly when that date is just yet. I may have seen one. I'll double check. But uh, play, play around, check it out, see what you think. Um, and so it kind of talks, walks you through a little bit different. I think this makes a little more sense for me personally, but everyone's a little different. But you have a customization pro What's it doing? It's taking me somewhere. Oh, you know what? It might be. So I did see the notification at the top that said that this is an invoice of an old template. So if you wanted to switch templates to the new one, you'll have to do that. That's fair. But it kind of walks you through. We use the drawer on the right hand side in QuickBooks Online a lot. And so it kind of walks you through the different options on the right hand side. And then you get to see physically what's changed and what you're going to see on the actual invoice before you send it out, uh, if you do, in fact, send it out. So you have uh, payment options. There's a design feature here, um, as well as any automation that you want to set up. So let's say you're a subscription-based company and you're setting a new invoice up for a new customer. And now all of a sudden, I could just set a reoccurring invoice right here. Make it super easy. I don't have to do it again. So I think from a from an intuitive perspective, I think it, it looks a lot cleaner. Um, and let's see recommended template. Let's try the, the modern one here real quick. The modern one, I believe, is the, the one that they use for the new. The other ones are, unfortunately, a little bit of the older options. Is it not going to change it? I guess that's it. Um, but you'll be able to scroll through, and you'll be able to see the changes that you make um, throughout uh, these are a bunch of custom fields that were created. Just keep in mind when you create custom fields, you can only have three show on the invoice. So these are all hidden. You'll see it says hidden, hidden, hidden. So just keep that in mind. So want to go back to the old layout? Just click old layout. Um, if I have time before the end of, uh, share feedback. If I have the time to share with you guys like the the article that is conjunction with this Jeanette I'll make sure to get that to you after the fact so you can share that with the with the folks excellent thank you um sorry for the detour I was like I feel like that's important to know okay let's go back squirrel moment happens a lot uh <laughs> the next thing I want and by the way the uh, the invoice UI user interface update applies to all versions of QBO. That is not specific to advanced. So not to just confuse anybody uh, that is uh, going to be happening across the product. So. Um, <clears throat> we have introduced forecasting into QuickBooks Online Advanced. Please hear me when I say it's very basic. Pretty straightforward forecasting. Use this new feature. You're going to go to the financial planning option in the left-hand navigation bar of QBO. I'll show you guys what that looks like and then go to forecast. I don't have any created in there, but I can show you what it looks like. It's very similar to what you're seeing now. But you can build a PO forecast from either a prior year's actuals or an average of the actuals from the prior three, six, nine, or 12 months. You can select the, the different options. After creating that, you can then convert it to, to your new budget if you so choose. And then you can even create rules to forecast specific accounts by a percentage, which you see here, which is the set rules. Think of it like bank feeds. You have rules that you can create, right? You create a, a, a condition and then it'll do exactly what you're looking for based on the execution that you're looking for. So, oh, I'm sorry, my dog was barking. I thought I heard something. Um, Working from home can be a little it's chaotic. Tenuous. It's tenuous for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I It's funny because like 
I've got my noise canceling headset on and I know when I like when I he normally hear her bark, I'm like, I know what the bark is. But for some reason, it wasn't registering properly. My ears must be all clogged or something. Um, OK. Oh. So I'm in Arizona. It's starting to get hot. We had our first 90 degree day here in Tucson last Thursday, and I think it's going to get 90 to, again today. Oh. And I'm so sad. <laughs> I'm so sad. It's really hot. <laughs> Triple digits are around the corner. <laughs> oh, yay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you guys can see here financial planning in the left-hand navigation bar forecasts. Uh, like I said, I haven't created one myself, but I can click on create forecast here. And it'll walk me through those actual steps. Forecast four, you can select your options for the rest of the year up to two or up to three. Your forecasting usage uh, using, you can do an average of your actuals or you could do what you have from the prior year. And then if you want to create a rule, income accounts, COGS, expense, other income, other expense, if you would like to either have them increase or decrease by a set percentage, you can do that. These are optional, not required. Once you have that forecast set up, then you can click next and um, it'll walk you through if you want to create a budget. Uh, in, in addition to that, or I should say, take that information and submit it into a, a budget. Um, so that makes it really cool. Again, nothing super crazy. It's pretty common when we um, launch new features inside of our product, we'll start small, work our way big. And so it's a start. It's a decent start, I think. So absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> um, next up is um, funny enough, some like random payroll updates, uh, but I think that they're important to, sh to, to speak to because they are, I, I think, important. Um, the first thing I want to share with you guys, which has been a massive pain point. So I started working it into it in 2012. I started in QuickBooks payments support, like technical support. And then I moved into, I actually became a full-time um EMS agent, so an employee management solutions agent, and um, I was taught how to support the the old school do it yourself product that we used to have back in the day. And so, um, one of the biggest things I've always heard was, "Is you mean to tell me I have to go to every employee and put their pay type and their deductions and their yeah, yeah, you do, but now you don't have to do that anymore." So this is really cool. I'm gonna jump back into the product because. This, I think, resonates a lot better when you see it, but I do need to switch again. Bear with me. It would be so nice if I could have a demo account that does everything, but alas, it doesn't work that way. And so, let me just... So this is my Dunder Mifflin QuickBooks Online Advanced account. I would use this one, but there's no data in it. I don't have anything in here, so. But I do have a payroll account tied to it. Um, if I go to the payroll option, so again, this is implying that you're using QuickBooks Online and you have a payroll, uh, a payroll account as well uh, included. And so we come here under the employees, you'll notice that there's a new button called Edit Payroll Items. And so this will walk you through the pay type options that you have currently, deductions and contributions as well. So whatever I show you in pay types will be the same for deductions and contributions. But you can create a new payroll item in the upper right hand corner, either um, once you create it, you'll be able to fill out the pay type, select what you're looking for, and then it'll walk you through which employees you would like to have access to it. If you're looking to mess with an existing one, you just simply click on the pay type that you're interested in. Um, and then you can actually check the boxes to say, hey, I want these employees to have that hourly rate. I can select edit um, by selecting their pay rate versus working hours days. And then I would click done. And then um, if I want to assign new employees, I can um, check the box here, but I only have the two employees created here. So I didn't have time to create any more employees other than Jim and Pam. So um, <clears throat> makes um, it really cool. Do you have time for a quick question about this? Yeah, sure. What's up? Um, so an anonymous attendee is asking if you can delete a deduction or contribution item. Can I? Can I? I don't know if I can. I, 
You know, it's really sad. We just talked about this in the in the know webinar, Jeanette, and I should remember this, but I don't. That's a great question. Let me double check. I want to say yes, but I don't see delete anywhere. So, okay. Let me let me double check on that for you. And get back good. to you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, I thought you could, but now I'm like, where did it go? Yeah, I'll definitely look into that. Um, if it if the answer is no, then they've identified that it's still like something that they is they are aware of and that they're gonna like work on it. But if it is there, I'm just blind and can't see it. Gotcha. Um, so editing and adding uh, in batches, essentially, pay types and deductions and contributions, it makes it really nice. Um, the other thing, too, I wanted to share with you guys, I I was kind of debating on, like, is this even, like, worth sharing? But I think it is. Retro, like, just in general, uh, a lot of folks are under the assumption that QuickBooks Online is not very... Um, like you can't get efficient in it. And I, I I wholeheartedly disagree. I think it's understanding and knowing how an online product works and the tools that are available for you to utilize it, right? And so keyboard shortcuts. A lot of folks I talked to are like, I didn't even know I could use keyboard shortcuts. So the update is there's a new keyboard shortcut that allows you to just start running payroll, which is control alt and the letter U, if you're in a Mac or on a Mac, it's control option. Um, and so just to show you what that looks like, let me get out of this really quick. Let's go back to the dashboard, just to share, just for funsies. Um, but if you do control alt and the letter U, it'll automatically take you to the run payroll screen. And this is what it would look like. In this case, I have two different pay schedules. It's asking me to select one and then I would click continue. But what I really wanted to show you guys was if you're not familiar with the keyboard shortcut screen, it's control alt question mark. If it wants to work, why it's being dumb. There it goes. Control alt question mark. Again, if you're on a Mac, it's control option question mark. And uh, this gives you a few things, your company ID. If you're calling into support and they ask for a company ID, that's how you find it. And then these are all of the uh, keyboard shortcuts that actually do work in the product that you can utilize. So not exactly the same as if you're transitioning from like QuickBooks desktop, but uh, it does help, I think, mitigate some of that. I like to be on my keyboard. I want to continue to stay on my keyboard. There is options and opportunities to do that. So very small, but mighty. That's an update. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Any other questions come through on the payroll stuff yet? Not at the moment. Okay, cool. Um, the other thing I just wanted to share with you guys was the um some of the resources and benefits that are available. So with our full service payroll offerings, we have kind of you know, expanded what we can offer. So, you know, if you need to incorporate medical insurance. Right. We have partners that work with that 401k, uh, you know, workers comp like there's opportunities to do a lot. There's HR resources, depending on what you're looking for, if you need that, um, depending on the version of payroll that you have as well. Um, all kinds of cool things. But one of the newer things that you can look into if you're interested is, is um, you can now easily access affordable, flexible health care packages through the benefits tab. I believe this is just a different vendor. So this is just offering you guys a different um, option. Over 200 plus health insurance carriers, both nationwide and local. Uh, and so you can enhance coverage by adding vision and dental plans at no additional cost if you're looking for those for your employees. Um, and it's all seamlessly integrated into QuickBooks. And so if you are using our payroll services and you're looking to add more benefits for your employees, the benefits tab is the best place to go for that. And this is just kind of a, hey, did you know, FYI, we have this option available for you guys. So, and it's all integrated. You guys don't have to do anything. Um, you can walk through the plans, talk to somebody, uh, get it set up, uh, and then it'll be directly through um, QuickBooks. I believe second to last update that I wanted to share with you guys here really quick, um, share documents. So this is a thing. Uh, if you guys are familiar with our payroll service, if you're an employee who's getting paid by QuickBooks Online, you can access your 
W-2 and your pay stubs through a product called Workforce. And uh, Workforce is an application that um, allows them to also see their, um, I believe they're integrating the, the time tracking stuff into the workforce eventually as well. So it's kind of like a one-stop shop from the employee perspective. Um, and so uh, now you can actually share documents uh, to your employee. So um, basically when you're inside the employee list of your QuickBooks Online product and you're looking at the documents page for your, an active employee, you can send them or upload a, and send them something to review. One of the things that is very, it's been called out. And so I just wanna make sure you guys hear me when I say, uh, currently if I'm an employee and my employer sent me something, I can only access it through the QuickBooks workforce on the web and not the mobile application. Um, if you guys are familiar, mobile applications kind of differentiate functionality from the, from a web browser. Um, and that's just simply because of coding, right? They haven't built it into the app just yet. So if you are sending documents to employees, just make sure they understand that they need to log into a website to do that. It will not go through in the mobile app. So nothing I can really share on that one. Um, but then the last thing I wanted to share with you guys, uh, was the, and this is another one I can't show, but um, this is actually very helpful and very nice. So we've understood over the years that when you run a payroll, and let's say you have your bank feeds connected to QuickBooks Online, they don't necessarily automatically match or marry when you have your payroll paychecks and then you have the direct deposit that actually comes out of your physical checking account. And so um, we have now automatically matched the corresponding bank transactions with direct deposit uh, paychecks. So with this update, each paycheck paid by direct deposit will be auto matched to a bank debit in the bank transaction. So there's no more trying to figure out which employee it was, where does it go, how do I match it? Or I've even heard some people just exclude them and call it a day. So now you can see the ability to auto match direct deposit payroll checks. Um, there is a link here to learn more about that specifically because it kind of goes through the the specifics around it. Um, since I don't, we don't have a, a, an account where I can just pay myself a direct deposit. I think that's a no no. Uh, last I checked, but uh, but I don't have an opportunity to actually physically show you what that looks like. So um, definitely check out the article for for more on that. But um, from what I've heard. People are very, very happy about it and very excited that this is finally here. <laughs> uh, so, yes, I agree. Um, but, yeah, that's actually all I had for you guys today. And I, I think I extended it longer than I needed to, but I hope this was helpful. Well, I know it was helpful for me. Um, in our last couple of minutes here, we don't currently have any questions in the queue, but if you have any pressing questions, um, I encourage you to get them in there now. Um, while people are typing their questions, um, I will just say that if you have any questions about any of the items that Leah covered today, um, there is contact information up on your screen now. You can always reach out to us. We're always willing to help. Um, and you can always, of course, contact into it as well. Um, but it doesn't look like we have any questions coming through. Um, you must have done a really good job, Leah, as always. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise uh, and joining us today. And I wanna thank our attendees as well for joining us today. Um, just a reminder that the recording and the slide deck will be shared with you later this afternoon. Oh, wait, we've got some questions. Andrea is asking, how many forecasts can you have? Um. Uh, good question. Um, let me see if I can tell you. <laughs> I actually don't know. I would, I would assume that there's not a limit on the forecasting piece, but I could be wrong. Um, but give me just one quick second here. And I just wanted to share, um, in terms of the question that came in, um, for the, uh, the payroll updates that you had, 
Uh, Carol is saying that in QuickBooks Desktop, you could adjust your liability payments such as workers' comp, but in QBO, I don't see that option, which um, I know you were supposed to get back to us, but that's just an FYI for that user. Yeah, I think for for workers comp, it's a it's a little bit different because we we use the pay as you go, and there's actually like a third party that we work with. So I don't think that you have the ability to to do that through there. Um, that just might be working as designed, honestly. Gotcha. Um, so I'm not seeing. So normally when there's limitations in our products, we will call it out, and I'm not seeing anything specific for forecasts when it comes to 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 how many you can create. Um, so keep that in mind while creating them. I don't see a specific, like you can only create three. So right. I don't want to say that there's a limit. Um, so I don't see anything, honestly. All right. Sounds good. Unlimited forecasting. Look at that. <laughs> All right. Um, well, if there are no further, further questions, uh, I just want to thank everybody once again and tell you guys to have a great day and we'll be reaching out in the next 24 hours. Thanks again, Leah. Thanks, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.